So this video is about making a granite workbench for the workshop. Now I don't have a fantastic woodworking shop, but I do have a CNC. So this should be fun. So the first job is to machine the stock to the right length. And I'm doing these in pairs, so the posing sides of the actual table. And doing this ensures that I don't end up with some sort of trapezoid when I actually put the table together, because the opposing pairs are the same length. I can then use the edges as my datum to actually do the mortise and tenon joints. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is because the stock does not fit on my CNC. So yes, I definitely need a bigger workshop. So I know what some of you are thinking, what happens when you put the cutter spinning the wrong way? Well, that's what happens. Don't say I don't disappoint. Let's have a look at that in slow motion. Oh yeah, it's on fire. Mm -mm. Lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just saw me clean up some of the areas with the multicolor and uh, this is just to ensure that you know the areas that the CNC didn't actually manage to remove some material I can just get rid of that material. Over here I'm actually putting the radiuses in on the actual tenon joints. The reason why I'm doing this is because I actually just rather keep the mortise joints the way they are. Um, it's a lot easier than going in with the chisel and squaring the mortise joints up so I'm just going to put some radiuses on the tenon joints. I think this also results in a stronger structure. Well, for me anyway, because maybe it's my technique, but whenever I chisel the mortise joint in pine, it just tends to crack a couple of things. Probably should sort that out. But anyway, this works very well for me. So over here I'm machining a flat section on my support joists. So these are actually one of four joists that actually sit in the center of the wooden carcass. And the idea is that these spread the load of the granite, but I need these to be quite flat and also quite well dimensioned with respect to the tenon joints. So when I put everything together and put the granite on top, everything sits flat. It's going to be important because I'm bashing big heavy pieces of metal probably on this table and I kind of don't want the granite to crack on me. Probably will, but I'm going to minimise those chances. So this is me trying to do that. So this was by far my least favourite machining job. Um, essentially, I'm trying to machine off a recess part of um, the front, rear and the two sides of the table. And in this recess, the granite actually just sits in. But um, my least favourite job, only because the amount of times I had to put this back on the table. Um, essentially the granite is not parallel, the top surface and the bottom surface weren't completely parallel with each other. 
So I had areas on the granite which were maybe two mil higher than other areas. So I had to uh, crack for it in this particular part and then also the support joists I machined up earlier. But the setup on this particular job is quite intense because I have to constantly set it up and get my datums because it just doesn't fit on the table. And over here what I'm doing is I'm machining the actual mortise joints that actually the support braces sit into. To fill in the actual logo, I'm uh, using some laminating epoxy, uh, partly because it's not very viscous, it flows very, very well. And I'm mixing this with some really fine coal dust. And essentially when I sand this down, what it does is it kind of flakes the coal dust really nicely and it almost gives a miniature granite look. So um, you only really can get this effect when you actually look up real close to the actual logo itself. But I think the effect looks really, really good. And um, it's a nice little addition because it kind of matches with the table color. So although this looks like it went together really well, there were some minor issues. So I did actually have to get it back on the CNC and take off a little bit more material in certain areas. But um, essentially no dramas. Um, the glue up, unfortunately, I did quite late in the evening. So the camera footage is quite bad. Also, the glue up was just so rushed. I mean, I just needed to get the pieces in place before I, um, well, before the glue dried. So I'm actually using some Slow Cure 24 hour just Evo stick. It works quite well. Didn't actually get that much glue seepage, so I'm happy with that. But yes, a rush process, so apologies for the footage. So before you comment below if I have a tenon saw, I do now. Mainly because this took ages with its blunt, very inappropriate tool. But I'm very happy I left some material on these um, leg pieces because Essentially, it allowed me to actually get these pieces quite flush with the supporting sides. So I'm definitely not proud of how I got this granite slab into the table and a massive thank you to my family who gave me a hand on this. But essentially when I was doing this, I thought to myself, this has got to be the worst way of installing a piece of granite and I really, really regret it having this type of design. After I installed it though, I was pretty happy with the results. However, the table naturally lends itself to being really, really hard with tolerances and I just had to constantly check and recheck and re-recheck to make sure things are lined up really well finally. I'm happy I did this. Would I do it again? Maybe, maybe not. I'm uh, indifferent at the moment. So I'm hitting the bench with 60 grit over here on orbital sander and then I move to 120 grit. I uh, don't really see the point of going any higher than this with pine. 
Um, however, for the logo, I did actually go up to a thousand grit. And that's because the effect of the actual granite, the granite effect I was going for, really does come out on these uh, high grits. And you really can see it over here. It does look really good. And with a lick of oil, it looks even better. So I'm actually really, really happy with this. Ready? Ooh, that's nice. I'm using nothing fancy here, just um, Rustin's Danish oil. I think the oil was quite light and um, I didn't really want to darken the grain of the wood. But I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Um, even after drying, it didn't really darken the wood very much. The one thing I would say though is maybe leave it to dry between coats. I didn't do this and it's still stinking in my shed four or five weeks after I've actually put it down. So other than that, no complaints, great stuff, looks good. So I put together some shelving units and what I've used is um, just some oak veneered MDF. So it's real oak and then I've used some oak edging strips on the sides. And I've reinforced this with some steel rebar. And the reason I've done this is because this is gonna be used as a material storage rack in my workshop. So I'm gonna be putting big, heavy pieces of metal and that stuff and sliding them on these shelves. So I've definitely gone for form over function. They look absolutely stunning. However, if you look at them now installed, I've uh, got some scuffs on them. And <laughs> to alleviate this problem or to minimize the risks, I've actually used some man's two-part lacquer. Um, I've gone for satin because I thought gloss would get scuffed to death. But um, in reality, I reckon these shelves are probably gonna have it and probably gonna look like crap after a couple of months. But I've definitely gone for form over function and they look great at the start, so I'm happy with them. Okay, so here it is all installed and I think it looks really good. Um, the granite really contrasts against the pine border and there's some gold flakes in the granite actually which the camera can't pick up but um, they look really stunning to the eye. So hopefully you enjoyed that video and if you did, maybe give it a like down below and consider subscribing. Um, I just want to get these videos out there, I want to grow the channel and I can only do that with your help. So thanks again and have a good day.